On March 10th, 2011, I was in Cambridge at the MIT Media Lab, meeting with faculty, students, and staff, and we were trying to figure out whether I should be the next director. That night at midnight, a magnitude 9 earthquake hit off of the Pacific coast of Japan. My wife and family were in Japan, and as the news started to come in. I was panicking. I was looking at the news streams and listening to the press conferences of the government officials and the Tokyo Power Company, and hearing about this explosion at the nuclear reactors and this cloud of fallout that was headed towards our house, which was only about 200 kilometers away. And the people on TV weren't telling us anything that we wanted to hear. I wanted to know what was going on with the reactor, what was going on with the radiation, whether my family was in danger. So I did what instinctively felt like the right thing, which was to go onto the internet and try to figure out if I could take matters into my own hands. On the net, I found there were a lot of other people like me trying to figure out what was going on, and together we sort of loosely formed a group, and we called it SafeCast. And we decided we were going to try to measure the radiation and get the data out to everybody else because it was clear that the government wasn't going to be doing this for us. Three years later. We have 16 million data points. We have designed our own Geiger counters that you can download the designs and plug it into the network. We have an app that shows you most of the radiation in Japan and other parts of the world. We are arguably one of the most successful citizen science projects in the world, and we have created the largest open data set of radiation measurements. So it's happening in software and in hardware and bioengineering, and so this is a fundamental new way of thinking about innovation. It's a bottom-up innovation. It's democratic. It's chaotic. It's hard to control. It's not bad, but it's very different. And I think that the traditional rules that we have for institutions don't work anymore. And most of us here operate with a different set of principles. One of my favorite principles is the power of pull. Which is the idea of pulling resources from the network as you need them, rather than stocking them in the center and controlling everything. So, in the case of the Safecast story, I didn't know anything when the earthquake happened, but I was able to find Sean, who was the hackerspace community organizer, and Peter, the analog hardware hacker who made our first Geiger counter, and Dan, who built the Three Mile Island monitoring system after the Three Mile Island meltdown. And these people, I wouldn't have been able to find beforehand, and probably were better. That I found them just in time from the network. I'm a three-time college dropout, so learning over education is very near and dear to my heart. But to me, education is what people do to you, and learning is what you do to yourself. And it feels like, and I'm biased, it feels like they're trying to make you memorize the whole encyclopedia before they let you go out and play. And to me, I've got the. Wikipedia on my cell phone, and it feels like they assume you're going to be on top of some mountain all by yourself with a number two pencil, trying to figure out what to do. When in fact, you're always going to be connected, you're always going to have friends, and you can pull the Wikipedia up whenever you need it. And what you need to learn is how to learn. In the case of Safecast, a bunch of amateurs. When we started three years ago, I would argue that we probably, as a group, know more than any other organization about how to collect data. And publish data and do citizen science. Compass over maps. So this one, the idea is that the cost of writing a plan or mapping something is getting so expensive, and it's not very accurate or useful. So in the Safecast story, we knew we needed to collect data. We knew we wanted to publish the data, and instead of trying to come up with the exact plan, we first said, "Oh, let's get Geiger counters. Oh, they're, they've run out." Let's build them. There aren't enough sensors. Okay, then we can make a mobile Geiger counter. We can drive around. We can get volunteers. We don't have enough money. Let's Kickstarter it. We could not have planned this whole thing, but by having a very strong compass, we eventually got to where we were going.